Hey there, it's Max from Penji, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about if tests, a new coding concept. So far we've gotten used to using while loops, which are essentially statements that, as long as they're true, allow the computer to execute a body of code many times. However, if you look on the right, you see an if statement, if not pam.isfish here, which is another kind of statement that checks for a condition, but will only execute one time. Let's go examine the difference by using some Penji code. I've queued up a while loop here, while not pam.isfish here, that will execute pam.waddle as long as there is no fish at pam's current location. And as you can see, pam waddles as many times as there are not fish at her location and finally grabs that fish at the end, after the loop is finished. However, let's now look at an if statement if not pam.isfish here, which will execute pam.waddle when there is not a fish at pam's location once. As you can see, this plays out by pam only waddling once and grabbing nothing after the if statement executes. Essentially, the if statement tests once if there's any fish at pam's location, and if there is not, pam will waddle. And that's the main difference between our if statements and while loops. The while loop will execute over and over as long as a certain condition is true, but the if statement will only execute one time. Now, if statements and while loops will come in handy when we're dealing with a situation like this, where without if statements, we'd have to write three while loops to navigate Pam from the top left corner of the water box all the way around its perimeter to get that fish. So how could we write a more efficient program using if statements? Well, we have to think about when should the program we're trying to write end and what should it do? Keeping in mind that in the upcoming units, all assignments will can be completed with only one loop. So let's try to rewrite this code consisting of three while loops in just a single while loop that has if statements. First, we have to start with the while statement or the condition we'll use for our loop, which in this case, could easily be, while well, there's no fish here. So going from there, we have to figure out how we're going to layer our if statements. Looking for patterns in our task, we see that while Pam is next to the water, we could use is water right as a condition for an if statement, and that when Pam gets to the corner, there will be no water. So our first if statement is if water is on the right, then Pam will waddle. Else, Pam will turn right. Written this way, as long as the loop is running, it'll first check if water's on the right, and if that's true, Pam will waddle. If it's not true, it'll go till the else part of the if statement, and Pam will turn right. So now, what will happen if we run this code on this map? As you can see, Pam starts above the top left corner of our box of water here. And according to the loop, she will continue to waddle until if is water on the right is no longer true. When she gets to the corner, it's no longer true, and the else part of the statement executes, and Pam turns right. Hmm, you see we have a problem here though. Water is no longer on the right, so Pam is continuing to turn indefinitely. She gets trapped in the corner. Well, a simple addition of waddle in the else section of the if statement will resolve this. Check it out now. Now Pam waddles after turning right as part of the else and can continue along the perimeter until she finally gets that fish. Here's what the actual code looks like. We start with our while loop while not Pam that is fish here and layer our if statement in there with the if and else parts. If Pam that is water right, then waddle. And when that's not true, Pam will turn right and waddle. So what this code breaks down into is a hierarchy of tests, the overarching one being our while loop. We then go on to check our if test, and if that's true, execute pam.waddle. If that's not true, then we implement else when if is false, but never both. And after we implement one, we go back to the top of our loop and start it again. The entire process looks something like this. As a final wrap-up, 
let's remember that if tests happen once, and that an if-else structure is one unit, and each time the computer will either execute the if part or the else part, but never both. It's only the while loop that occurs over and over again as long as its condition is true, with the if statement and else statement being chosen once at every iteration. So when should you use an if-else structure? Well, it's always a good thing to use when our options are binary. Whether there's water on the right or not is a good example. These cases, where something could be true or false, and the actions are different accordingly, turn up all the time in Penji and go hand-in-hand -hand with if-else structures. Well, now that you've gotten an intro to if statements, move on to the next Penji challenges and try them out yourself.